Larry, are you there? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? All right, there you go. A little technical problem. We got it together. We're, uh, we're speaking to the uh, lead singer of the legendary group, Cammy. Oh, how you doing this afternoon, man? I'm hanging in there, baby. I'm hanging in there. All right, everybody in Lake Charles, man, I've had, I've been talking to people in Lake Charles for the past week. They have so many questions for you. I can't even get all of them, so we're just going to kick it, man. First of all, I want to talk about, you were just telling me uh, off the air that Cameo is going to be performing for like a year over in Las Vegas, huh? Yeah, that's correct. At the Westgate Hotel, the old Las Vegas Hilton, it's for Cameo. We've always wanted to. Uh, you know, perform in Las Vegas because we always felt that our show was conducive to what people are, you know, what they expect to see in Las Vegas. And we have, uh, you know, years and over 40 years of hits. And, and uh, you know, I mean, we just tell them when we're out there, so what better place to do it but in Vegas? There, there you go. And so, and, and most people eventually will get to Vegas. So now they, they you're there. You're there for about, uh, you, you were telling me three months at a time. There's a little break, but it runs through, through for a year, correct? So folks got a, a lot of good opportunity to come on out and see Cameo perform. Okay, Larry, so now let's talk about these 40 years, man, that Cameo has been together. How did Cameo get started uh, back so many years ago? Oh, man, you know. Man, this story is it's so legendary. Uh, right. We used to play in in bars and, and, and show clubs as the New York City players, okay? Right. And, you know, during that time, uh, we had uh, Gwen Guthrie with us, actually, uh, God bless her soul. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we used to play all up and down the East Coast, you know, uh, Rochester, New York, Buffalo, New York, Toronto, Canada, you know, and... Um, and it got to the point where it became a little difficult working with a, a female lead. Mm -hmm. And and I changed the concept of the act in as much that any members would have to play more than one instrument right. and be able to sing as well. Right. Okay. And we were up in Toronto, Canada, when uh, when we signed a deal with Casablanca Records. It was a song we had called Find My Way. Mm -hmm. It was a song we didn't write. It was... Uh, a disco song, and then I asked um, Cecil Holmes after that song, I asked Cecil Holmes to come listen to our original material. So he flew into New York and um, listened, and after, you know, we rented the rehearsal space so he could hear us and everything, and afterwards I asked, so what do you think, Cecil? And he said, we can definitely do something. And uh, therein um, precipitated our first uh, uh, album, Cardiac Arrest. We cut, cut to play the records and we changed our name to Cameo because it depicted exactly what we were trying to do and, you know, and each individual was like a finely called Jim or Stone. Right, right. Uh, if you look up the dictionary, you'll see our picture in there. There you, there you go. Now, I remember looking at some of your older album covers, you guys had a lot of members at one time. I like, what's the most amount of members you had in Cameo at, at one particular time? Well, we had, we had, you know, uh, 10 members, pretty much, I'd uh -huh. say, uh, 11, okay, on stage, right. but what I noticed was that, you know, the public could could focus more on fewer people, okay, right. and so what we decided to do was just to, to have, you know, pretty much the principles on the album cover, that way it would give people less um, guys to focus on, mm -hmm. okay, but it didn't diminish our stage performance or, you know, appearance at all. We still had, you know, the uh, 11 cats there. We had horns and, and the, uh, you know, section and everybody there, uh, but it was easier for us to do so, and as a result, everyone else copied, like the guy band, right. uh, guy, right. uh, I could go on and on. Right, right. Okay, now you know what? You guys are known for the jams that you have, no doubt about that. Word up, talk up the side of your neck. Uh, she's strange, but also you guys got some classic slow jams, and, and that's you know that's out the ordinary when a group can 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 jam, but then have some very lovely classic love jams like Hanging Downtown and uh, Don't Be Lonely was always a favorite of mine. So, I mean, how do you think you guys can jam like that and then you can do the love songs and y'all do that so well? Well, when we were playing at, at clubs and show clubs early on, you had to do pretty much 
the top ten of what was happening at the time. Right. So we were never accustomed to doing any songs without ballads. Right. Okay, and and again, the requirement of the group was that you know each instrumentalist would have to sing as well. So that gave us the flexibility to be able to you know hit with a song like you know uh, Word Up and then come back with a Why Have I Lost You? Right. You know, and 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 for us, we get our own A and R. You know, the company would say, you know, well, radio is playing ballads now. So what we would do was come with a fast song. And then every time they told us they needed an up-tempo song, we <laughs> we come with a ballad. Right. And, and it seemed to go against the grain in, in, in contrast to what they told us radio wanted to hear. Right. But it worked because, see, we back then we worked approximately 300 days a year. Wow. So we had to stay on top of our own A&R. Right. And, 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 you know, we never wanted to be pigeonholed as one particular act only known for a particular a particular thing. Right. It was a, a, a universal approach to an age-old problem. You know, what are you doing? So we do reggae as well as, you know, ballads. And then, and then another thing that I really like cameos for, you go into, like, uh, you kind of dab into the political world with uh, talking out the side of your neck. Was that two politicians? Because I know there's some politicians out there now that need to hear that. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, during the show, I always, uh, I always announced that you know we had no idea that songs written so long ago would right. be relevant still today. Mm -hmm. But you know, if a song doesn't have a redeeming value, okay, like you know, and, and then I'm not putting rap down. Don't get me wrong, because you know we have rap in our in our material as well as it evolved. Right. But uh, you know, like. Um, Go screw your mama. You know, we we, we didn't find that appealing. Right, Neither right. did we find that, you know, a redeeming value. I don't think you'll ever get into an elevator five years from now and hear a rapper tell you about, you know, True. what a hole is, is, right. is like. You know, you know, these holes ain't royal. You know what right. I mean? I don't think you'll hear that in an elevator. And it didn't do much for publishing. So we decided to stay away from that and just do what we do. Right. Okay? And, and that's even relevant today because our next release... Uh, you know, we, everyone is going in one direction. We're going to stay in a direction that made us who we are. Okay? And that's funk and variety. There you go. We are talking to the lead singer of Cameo, the founder of Cameo, Larry Blackman. You know, Larry, all the ladies want to know the cup. You still got it? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wish I could put that cup somewhere. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, honestly, it, it's been good for us in a lot of ways uh, right. and then going into Europe and England you know it was a sensation and, and for some reason I don't know I mean sex is on everybody's mind I don't get it but right. you know uh, my cup runs over right. but, yeah. <laughs> all right and you know and what folks don't know um, you went to Juilliard am I right I mean that is a very prestigious musical school I mean, do you still uh, pull on any experiences you had back then, today, in 2015? I have to honest, I have to honestly say uh, that uh, my time at Juilliard uh, did very little for me uh, in, in the genre of which we exist. But it was interesting, you know, there were a lot of stuck-up people there and, uh, <laughs> you know, professors who probably had designs on being instrumentalist, virtuoso instrumentalist right. uh, that were teaching school and maybe a little bitter about it, but they would say things like, you know, no one ever made a no one made a contribution to contemporary music other than the Beatles, you know. Right. And, and 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 I love the Beatles, see, but you know, I, I just didn't go with that in terms of I didn't think that was the picture you wanted to put into the minds of the students. And while going, and I and I waited a year and a half back to high school to go because, of course, my parents couldn't afford the tuition. Right. So I applied for all types of extension grants and everything. So I went at night, and uh, I went the same uh, year that Robin Williams was there. Okay. Actually, he was the talk of the school at the time. Right. So you know, I I, I wanted to hedge my bet. If in fact we didn't make it then at least I could be a pit musician on Broadway, right. you know, and play the drums and, and, you know, and it was great for a resume, but I didn't finish. Right. And I, I don't have any regrets about that, you know.
Okay. All right. Yeah. It, well, it seemed to work out all right. All right. And did you? I mean, I know you could not imagine like what forty or so years ago that cameo would still be as hot playing in Vegas for a year. I mean, did you ever imagine this when you first got the guys together uh, many years ago? Absolutely not. I mean, I had you had had the question been asked, are you guys going to be together four years from now? I, I wouldn't have made, say one way or the other, right. you know, but it, it's fantastic. I mean, but there was always something in the back of my mind about playing Vegas, you know, and I had no reason to 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 really have that picture. Right. Uh, but it was always in my, in my mind thinking, you know, maybe six months out of, out of the year we'll wind up in Vegas, you know. And, and Vegas is one goal of two. And, and I think that our music on our show, as well as our genre, would work well on Broadway as well. Okay, so those are the goals. And to be at this point in the music business, and we're not spring chickens right. by any means, right. but you wouldn't be able to tell that if you come to a cameo show. And I think that has kept us youthful and kept and kept us relevant. And I think that yes, black lives matter and black business matters as well. And if we don't support each other, well, do we expect anybody else to go out of their way to support us? I don't think so. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, we are a black owned radio. We are a, we are a black owned radio station, so we definitely support that thought right there. Larry Blackman, lead singer of Cameo. If you have not seen Cameo in concert, I don't know what you're thinking about. I've seen Cameo, I know about I've seen you perform about six or seven times, Larry. Hey, well here's your opportunity. We're not far from Vegas. It's not that far away. It's close enough for you to go check out Cameo. Now, when does this engagement in uh, Las Vegas start, Larry? We're starting. We're starting in about three weeks. Okay. 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 It will be announced for sure, and we will certainly stay in touch with your station there to, to uh, make everybody aware of the um, of the announcement. It was originally October seventh, but because of uh, promotion and marketing, we wanted to move it back to give it a good shot and give it a good start. So, you know, I'll have a date on Monday. All right. Sounds good. Now, you were telling me you just were in New Orleans last weekend. You should have came through Lake Charles, but that's all right. We'll, we'll let you slide because I know next time you're in the area, you have to come through and uh, say what's up to the folks of Lake Charles. Absolutely. Lake Charles is, one, is cameo country for sure. I mean, I can think back on, on dates that we used to do in Lake Charles along with the old days. And consequently, we just played with them in uh, Indianapolis uh, right. last Friday, I think it was. Okay. And uh, Eddie and I, was we talked about the old cool jazz festivals and, and the dates we used to do together, which was phenomenal. And they still sound good, and, and they have a fantastic show as well. Well, well, being from Ohio, and they're from Ohio, you know I agree with that, Larry, no doubt. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey, listen, we have to get into, I, would you say Word Up is, y is the biggest hit uh, that Cameo has had? We'd say that Word Up is the biggest hit because it was a world, worldwide uh, phenomenon and and, um, and and a great a great thing for us. Um, it, 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 you know, the hits just keep on coming, man. You know, what can I tell you? That's right. Keep on coming. Hey, listen, Larry Blackman, lead singer of Cameo. The best of luck, the best of luck uh, in Las Vegas. And thanks so much, man, for taking time out to talk with us and all your fans in Lake Charles. All right? Appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. And it's a pleasure. Anytime. All right. Larry Blackman, lead singer of Cameo. Here's that number one hit you were talking about worldwide, world up on 104.9.